Welcome back guys. Today is gonna be really fun because I made a brand new tool and it's called the Maximus Clamp. And I really wish I would have made this 20 years ago. Long before I started my tool company or even my first YouTube video, I was a welder, fabricator, iron worker. And I always found myself needing to clamp and hold parts in places where standard clamps just wouldn't work. For example, it was difficult trying to clamp objects on top of tabletops or clamp around a large object like an excavator bucket. And then there's the dilemma of trying to get warped sheet metal back into alignment. So the current work holding solution to this problem is this clamp right here, a C-clamp. This is 80 bucks and we need to chop it in half. What a waste. So now that my C-clamp is cut in half, there's one more thing to consider and that's the material that the C-clamp is actually made out of. This one is an expensive one. This is about 80 bucks and this is forged steel. Most C-clamps are actually cast iron. The price difference between the two is really extreme. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld these clamps to the table. The reason why you don't wanna use the cast iron clamps is because, well, welding to cast iron is horrible. And watch, I can break this off pretty easily. Boom, the cast iron just literally just comes apart. See, now the steel's holding really well, much better. So that's something to consider when you're cutting apart your perfectly good C-clamp to do something like this. But there's another solution and that's to make your own and we call that a dog. I actually have no idea why this DIY tool is actually called a dog, but I think it's because they look a little rough. The dog starts life as a piece of square stock that has one corner removed. Then a heavy duty threaded nut is welded to the side. Then a piece of all thread or bolt can be added. From here, the only thing left to do is weld it to the material that needs to be pushed, pulled, or clamped. As the dog gets welded on and ground off time after time, the welds start to pile up, making it more inconvenient to use. The dog also has a very limited throat height, which could be really inconvenient in some instances. The other problem of cutting apart your perfectly good C-clamp is the throat height. This is only six inches and that's gonna be the largest capacity you could put underneath this clamp. So I'd have to stack it or build it on top of something to get that extra height that I need. Getting quite stupid. So what happens if I told you that there's something better than cutting apart your C-clamp and doing all of this mumbo jumbo just to get something held down in the middle of a table or get some parts lined up? And that is where this comes in. This is the Maximus clamp. It looks really simple. It looks really strange. So let me show you how it works. Well, basically we have one arm and a spindle, but we have nothing to attach to over here. And this is where the brilliance comes in is that we can attach this clamp to a piece of material like this one by two piece of tube steel. Just like that slips into the square hole. How cool is that? The way the Maximus clamp works is actually pretty simple. The rectangle hole in the arm has clearance so it can slide up and down the tube. Once pressure is applied with the screw, the arm gets cocked on the tube, removing all the clearance. This creates a strong binding fit, locking the arm in place. And now the screw can use the strength of the tubing to push. When you release the pressure on the screw, it relieves pressure on the arm, and then it's free to slide up and down again. So now that this clamp fits over a piece of tube steel, this gives us some real advantages over using a C-clamp. First things first, this is basically scrap and I can also go as tall as I want. I just need to get a little bit longer tube. That is nice. So not only can I use one by two square tube and steel, I can use a piece of aluminum, I can use a piece of solid, I can use a piece of stainless steel. If you're really in a pinch, you can use two pieces of one by one tubing and this clamp fits over the top. So basically what we're doing is we're removing the problem of cutting apart a perfectly good tool and designing one specifically for the task. So as cool as this tool is by itself, it needs a partner. And that's where this comes into play. This is the second half to a C-clamp. So now we can turn a one by two bar into a big C-clamp or a bar clamp. So now I can have a bar clamp of basically any size that I would like. How cool is that? The cool thing about having a small foot like this is that you can still reach inside square tubing. You can reach underneath a table. And then when you're done using it, you just pull them apart and store them in your toolbox or take them with you. And this is a consumable piece. Another cool thing to use this foot for, instead of solid welding this tube steel to the table, it's much easier just to add the extra arm as a kickstand. That is pulling back on this foot and pulling straight up on the weld, giving you the extra strength you need without having the troublesome weld that you gotta remove. So you're probably wondering how strong is this entire bar clamp system? So let's do a little competition. 
let's compare it to a common bar clamp that you can buy and let's see how strong it really is. So for this experiment, I want to test this clamp's maximum power. So I'm going to need to clamp something that's unmovable. But I really would like to use the edge of this table to be able to do this. And being able to hook over the edge and clamp that would be fantastic. But this bar clamp is too short. And it just seems like every time I go to use a bar clamp, I run into the same problem every time. And that's why I really like the solution of the one by two tubing, because I can make this clamp as big as I want. One thing that you'll notice when using a bar clamp is that the tube will bend under load. The longer the bar, the more it will deflect. The problem with the bending bar is that the spindle will actually start to get out of alignment. This is bad because the part can slip out of the clamp. To keep the spindle in alignment when the bar bends, I've calculated and installed a preload angle into the arm that will keep the spindle straighter when the bar bends. The angle of the arm needs to keep the spindle straight within an acceptable range when the tube is short or long. So to make things fair, I'm gonna have to weld some stops on the top of this table to give me that unmovable object so we can actually test it. All right, so this is a Bessie made in Germany, 1000 by 120 millimeter. And we're gonna just start clamping, see what happens. There we go. Okay, I can already see the bar bending. I'm at 120, 160, 230, 400. That's quite a bit of force. <laughs> 535. That's about as far as I wanna go. <laughs> That's pretty tight. 675. Holy moly. Got some serious bow to her. We made a samurai sword. <laughs> All right, on to the Maximus. The material I'm actually using for this bar is 120 wall thickness, one by two square tubing. Let's go for it. 250, 300, 700, 900. That's with my hands. The Bessie clamp does not have a provision for a wrench. You'd have to use a cheater bar over the handle. Now this tool has a hex on the back side of it, so I'm gonna switch to a wrench. All right, let's just keep going until the bar doesn't go anymore. <clears throat> 1,000. That's a lot of force. I feel like the bar is bending, I'm not going up anymore. 1,200 kilograms. I'm gonna stop right there before I hurt myself. That's a lot of force. This is the hollow tube. Can you imagine if this was a solid bar? Holy mackerel, you could get some force. There she looks. You know, it's not that bad. <laughs> it kind of came back pretty good. Flip it over, bend it the opposite way. Well guys, I'm so glad I have the Maximus clamps now in my toolbox. I know they're gonna be helping me in the future and I know they'll help you guys too. You can find the link down below or to find the Maximus clamps or visit fireballtool.com for more information and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I actually have no idea why this DIY tool is actually called a dog but I think it's because they look a little rough, 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 rough.